Hello my beautiful and lovely gamers, my name is Jones. Today we are breaking down a true favorite of this channel, Necros. We are taking a look at how Necros play Genji. This is a game where he gets over 80 LMs uh, in the end of it. We won't of course break it down all the way uh, because it's a 23 minute game and then I need to stop and coach. Then it would be like hours on hours on VOD review. Um, but hopefully we'll be able to do that very soon on stream as soon you know in the new year when i get a new pc hopefully i can get some more streaming done my my twitch my twitter and uh, the community discord is linked down in the description below a like on the video helps spread out the video helps show it to more people we're still a small content creator if you want to see more uh, pro breakdowns like this more overwatch content liking the video dropping a comment who you want to see next uh, and subscribing to the channel so I see growth on the channel. That is very, very helpful in getting more of these videos out the door. So thank you guys so, so much. And of course, in the end, if you want to rank up, improve and get better at the game, you can hire me as a private coach. Also help me, help support me and the channel financially. It's 50 euros for a two hour session. Hit me up on a Discord server. Link down that description. Now, what we got to take a look at today is Necros playing in a Masters game. And I know what you're thinking. That's kind of mean to the Masters players. And it is. Um, you don't see AD limbs any day. But the, the important part of this is the reason that we're taking a Masters is that most people that watch these videos are not top 500. So hopefully this will show you how a god like Gen god Genji grinds in these lower elos. As that is very, very different from playing in the hires. And of course, we're going to take a look at all the stuff. We're going to actually focus a little bit more on his mechanics this time previous videos we have focused more on playstyle but we still gotta take a look at his decision making how how aggressive he is and how fast because of this aggression how fast he builds his blade we talked about this before how necros uses very fast almost like snappy mechanics in combination with just being very very aggressive to one force kills but at least in worst case he builds play compared to other Genji that played a little bit more slower necros plays it very fast which end up giving him a huge amount of all charge uh, this is Nambani. He's going offensive with what seems to be a dive team. There's a Mercy in here. I do believe there's an Echo and a Monkey. So let's really just begin. We're going to go off here, of course. He's going to take a high ground. He's just going to, you know, break some stuff. He also has a ball. So two divers. There's an Echo here and a Mercy. It's pretty good. So far, he's going to go up here on the high ground as normal. Why do we go here? Because it's the best staging ground for Genji. Remember that this position has such an important... Uh, power play because if I move this a little bit down as a Genji you can reach here and you can also dive here and of course you can also punish whatever would be on low ground if you play in those elos where they hold low ground a lot and um, so you can stop them from playing remember the normal setups is a combination normally of some players here and then some players here right that way if you push stairs with your team they can fight you over here and if they lose the defending team loses this position and they fall back they will be able to play here. Your team pushes out. Now they're getting shot across. Right? So therefore, Genji players like to play over here because it allows us to off-angle. It allows us to off-angle. And it allows us to dive in and pressure any of these angles. If a team pushes hard here, maybe we want to help them. Or maybe we want to go and dive the support or snipers or whatever is here. Or just apply the pressure. Right? A lot of times, if not, then maybe you're going here. Your team is pushing up from mid. They want to dive this high ground. Well, you can follow that and get those easy kills, right? So we start in that position normally. The only thing you need to be aware of if you start here is it, when is your team going to push in? If they're pushing a little bit later, you need to be aware that you can get pressured, especially from this high ground. You can get pressured fairly easy by poke, and therefore you might have to go down here and take a mega pack and then return to that high ground. Because again, remember, if you are playing here alone, which happens a lot, where your team runs stairs with five others, so you're here alone, you won't get heals from this angle. So that's just the one thing you have to be aware of. But normally it allows you to farm a lot of blade ult charge, which again is very important for Genji, as you can always just brute force fight with that. So he's going to go in here, and his monkey already dives. Actually, a little bit too early for him. You can see how he's not in his dash range yet. So it's a little bit early for Necros. But Necros is going to push up here and going to poke. Notice what he did there. These are small details that most people don't pay attention to. They look at the big flashy place. Notice that he checked his right side before he moved. One, because 
again, this monk is a little bit late. Maybe he can make a play over here. Two, you don't want to go here and leave this right side unattended. Let's say it was an Isanyara that could just free fire into this. That's a lot of free damage where Necros could have gotten a kill or potentially at least push the guy back a lot. So he's going to go in here. He's going to check his right side. Nobody there. He's going to keep poking. He's not dashing yet. He's waiting for Emo Field and for everybody to come back in. Again, if he dashes too early, remember how his monkey went in here. There's a high chance that his monkeys get pressured down. So even if he like rushes and forces the dash, if he doesn't get anything out of that, that's 8 seconds. And his monkey will probably already have his leap ready. He, the monkey will... Uh, dive back up again, and now the let's say the, the dash is all four second cooldown or something similar, right? Then you can't follow that, and then you will constantly be out of sync. So really good on Necros. He just pokes, checks, pokes, pokes, pokes. His his Hammond slams. The ammo field is down. There's a lot of damage, a lot of pressure. He's gonna go in here. He's gonna try to help finish off the uh, Baptiste. He's gonna be a little bit late on that, but instead he just dominates the uh, the Sinyara. And again, I want to show you guys how quick his wall climbs are. And how he constantly utilizes the wall climb. We talk about this every single time we look at him. And again, it's so important to kind of notice how much he uses it to become more unpredictable and more difficult to deal with. Especially against stuff like Doomfist, but also generally against damage. Right? He goes in here, a little bit late on the Baptiste, spins around, right clicks here, gonna focus on the center. He's a little bit easier to get. Lands some good headshots. He's gonna hit it, deflect. Deflected onto the Doomfist as he got the Sinyata kill. Then he's gonna dash, add a, a jump here, and then he's gonna kind of add a little bit of a wall climb. Which is so important, right? Like, he's very, very fast. You barely didn't see the wall climb, but he did make a little bit of a climb there. I'm gonna continue pushing the Doomfist, gonna get punched back. It doesn't matter, because there wasn't a wall behind him. Keep pressuring the ball. Notice that he didn't give his high ground here. Again, another small detail, but very important. He doesn't gain anything from dropping down here, except that he can give it slammed, and the Doomfist potentially can set something up, right? So there's no need to drop before he absolutely needs to. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And as he said that, he drops. <laughs> he could have waited a little bit on the high ground if he wanted to. He jumped down, I don't know, to get more right clicks. Maybe he didn't think, maybe he didn't think that the, the ball was going to get out. But it doesn't matter. Again, no need to bother with what a ball does, because the ball is just going to run around. Keep with his dive team. Keep just pushing. Again, these are easy kills, right? Why go for solo kills when you can get for kill when you can go for kills so your team is help damaging? Here again, another nice little wall climb. His the Kree is here. He waits for his tanks to go in. He doesn't solo dive and get staggered, which I would probably do here. He goes in here. He adds the wall climb to make sure he doesn't get stunned by the flashbang. And if he does, he will be have momentum instead of easily get headshotted or find the hammered. Keep pulling the ball. There are other kills, but keep pulling the ball because he wants that blade. And again, the ball is the easiest target. There is a tracer that kills two people on the point, which is just unlucky. Uh, so he's going to go here and try to reclaim that. Uh, going to actually force him in a little bit of an uncomfortable spot. He's going to just keep on dashing on the payload, get some free kills here. Now the opposing team is starting to come back in again. So he's going to play it. A little bit of a risky one, as we all probably see here. Because one, yes, he's going to dash through here and deal some extra 50 damage. But he also gets it right in front of the Kree. Which luckily for us didn't have a flash ready for him. But you can see how that could be really, really, really bad. So that's like the one thing that you want to be aware of. The only reason to do that dash into it is to potentially burst a Baptiste. Um, but besides that, he could have dashed over the bridge, and it would actually have been a little bit safer for him. Then again, Necros is far more built on just raw mechanic and speed. You could see the Necros does stuff that you would think, oh, that, that you know, that's an unoptimal, or that's a risky play. And Necros does those, and because he's so mechanically fucking good, he can pull those off. But I don't recommend a gold player or a platinum player that watches this to mimic everything that he does. Remember the numbers that you're playing with here. Again, your dash deal, your, your swing with a blade deals 120 and your, da and your dash deal of 50, this is 180. So you will always, with a vanilla blade, need two swings times 120, which is 240 damage, to kill any like 200 HP hero. The only time that you use your dash as additional damage is against uh, stuff like tracers or two swings plus one swift strike, which is 50. So this would be, uh, uh, yeah, plus 50, which would be uh, uh, enough to kill like a Reaper or a May or something like that if they don't use their um, their, their abilities to, to get away. Um, or, again, as always, you can, of course, dash, swing, and then dash again, which would, in total will deal 120, but, uh, 220, sorry. But remember, when you're dealing a combo like that, when you're dealing 250 damage in that burst, uh, two, sorry, what am I saying? When you're, when you're dealing 
220 damage in that burst, you're only going with a margin of 20 health. So let's say you go for a Senyata, you, you dash through him, you pull the blade, he doesn't shoot you in the face, nobody else stuns you, nobody else does anything to you while you're blading in front of him and stuck in an animation where you can't do anything, right? You pull the blade, you cut, and if he got healed by like a Lucio or a Moira or anybody looked at him and started healing him, he will survive that. It's only 20 health. So you need to be, like, as you're pulling the blade, if he gets any sustain heal there, you will still need two swings, right? Unless you are relying on, on, on health from your team. So remember that a lot of time, this uh, 50 plus 120 plus 50 isn't worth the risk of getting stunned, slapped, uh, you know, then burning half your health while you're pulling the blade. So just be aware of that. The dashing over the opposing side is done, one, to get spotted by Nano and Mercies, two, to get overview, and three, more importantly, to make sure you can blade in a safe spot. That's also why you can blade on a high ground, you can pull the blade and then just drop down on them. You can do the same. I hope you guys love my amazing art, by the way. I I'm, uh, I've been called the Picasso of Norway uh, by some people, uh, merely myself, uh, in my dreams, but that's a different story. Nice follow-up. This is the speed, of course, that we're very known for, Nec that Necrus is very known for. Uh, how he sometimes does it, I fucking wonder. <laughs> um, notice how he just, like, immediately recognizes another player, immediately tries to push that kill. Again, this is to keep pressure, to just keep on snowballing. Notice that he already has a new blade. Because of his aggression, he's waiting for the Tracer to burn out all her blinks. Uh, so he doesn't miss it, because you don't want to dash while she's blinking. Pushing up here, he's he's actually applying pressure to the Tracer here. Chasing her off the, the area, which is nice. That way he's know his backline is certainly somewhat secure. They sleep the ball, they could probably do a count on here, do some free damage. Good kill onto the ball. Again, you can do a lot of damage with a Genji if you land only headshots. Um, but the Genji generally is not build around high amounts of damage all the time that's why necros is so good with him because necros closes gaps and with ga when gaps are closed you can land consistent high amounts of right clicks in head like you can land consistently like a, a player like necros can con almost consistently land two shurikens to the head easily on most targets that's four shurikens normally right so that is over 100 damage per right click and then his damage picks up a lot with you know you get on top of that you get um uh, you get Swift Strike and melee damage on top of all that, which is really good. Uh, here he's kind of waiting and looking if he's going to blade it, most likely. There's a ball that's getting slammed. He's just kind of staying on point. Forcing out Trance, which is huge. Forcing out Mines, which is even better. Then he's going to blade when all that is done. He gets Nanoed, and he actually messes up his Nano Blade, which is really sad to see. Uh, this is, again, what is... Again, once again, these mechanics that Necros are doing are amazing to look at and incredibly difficult to pull off but even and again look at this even a player as skilled at necros one of the best genjis in the world still messes up some of these combos that guy didn't die up from it somehow right now he doesn't have his dash reset now he's gonna go here and he's gonna finish off the sigma but instead of and then he once again he's gonna dash here to get back to the point right but again he didn't get much value out of that that is how genji that's how he does it he's incredibly fast that makes him difficult to catch difficult to more difficult to punish i have seen um for a very short time when he was actually scrimming uh i saw scrims with him because he scrimmed against our team and like we had to play sombra against them a hundred times like we had to play sombra against them because every time he had blade but we couldn't stop him we couldn't stop him because he's so fast so if he lands his combos He's unstoppable. But again, for anyone that's watching this, you probably can't pull this off that fast. You can't ghost dash and dash as fast as Necros. It's okay to slow down to make sure you get the mechanics consistent until you become a fucking machine like he does, right? Uh, or just download the Necro scripts, if you know what I mean, boys. Uh, just some good cleanup. Again, just moving around, doing some dashes. Also, the good thing, of course, with constantly burning his dashes on targets is applying a lot of pressure, forcing out abilities, which can help his team get easier kills, like forcing out Tracer Recall and so on. And But it also, of course, does that since he's tagging a lot of people, the chance of him getting a dash reset is actually pretty huge. So while he's burning his option uh, to finish something off, especially in teamfights like this, where it's not as much about options as it is about just getting the frags, um, he's... he's um, right. It, this is more of a brawl, right? It's not like there's a lot of, like big big brain opportunities it's, just, it's like kill the fucking hog right so burn everything on the hog the hog will most likely die same here right burn everything on the sand same will most likely die okay there's a ball and a tracer 
let's burn everything that we can onto that ball and then see what happens and try to burn down the tracer. Uh, so here it's less of a tactical thing, so burning the dash is not as dangerous, right? There the tracer dies, so he got his, his dash back to the ball, right? So here it's less about it, but you have to be aware that you are making sure you can kill this kind of stuff and you're not wasting the blade all the, uh, dash all the time, and you need to track if the potion side is coming back if you need this uh, swift strike. Here they have so many numbers advantage that the chance of him needing it to escape or something is so low, right? But then again, remember that even Master's game, and especially in the ELO, holy fucking shit. Looks like he has aimbot, right? Uh, necro scripting. Um, in his elo, even in masters and also in the use elo, people are far more consistent. If you're playing in gold, like when I coach a lot of gold players, your teammates can be much more inconsistent. The opposing side is also easier to abuse, but your mechanics is more inconsistent and your team is more inconsistent. So you just have to be aware of that. That sometimes uh, you can think that you know you're burning your resources and you're getting a lot of free kills, um, but sometimes you know the kills might not happen. The damage is not as consistent as you hope. Uh, and again, the opposing side, you need to make sure that when they are coming back, that you're not like caught out in the open without a dash. All of a sudden, you don't have any options but to uh, run away or potentially die. So just be aware of that when you try to mimic some of the stuff. There's a lot to learn about his speed right here. For example, he's immediately going to dive the send, immediately apply a lot of pressure, immediately almost force a kill. Um, and again, maybe he could have forced out trance there, right? So again, he's very, very known for this. Same with here, there's only a ball up there. He's pushing the payload. He's still up here kind of looking if he can make a play or get a or get some frags to get a little bit of card progress. He's constantly doing this, right? He's constantly active, but he's also very, very, very comfortable with what his limit is when it comes to this damage amount. That's very important to remember that he knows his limit, right? This is not normal. Like, and that, right? Like, he, this is not normal mechanics, right? This is him knowing his limits so well because he's played the hero so much. So you just need to be aware that this is really great, but he also has pockets on him. He has multiple pockets up uh, on him, making sure that he doesn't die. And he's always ready with this dash down here to... Not the emote, fuck off. Uh, down here uh, to make sure that he can get out. So he's fast and he can do this. And he can do that consistently, right? That is good right clicks on the engage and then right clicks into the body and then a melee and then to finish off. And again, even when he does that, that was 110 of his health, Right? And if you're a little bit slower than that, that's most of your health. And then he's going to chain this, something that we normally don't advise for Genji players, right? You're low health, and your team hasn't engaged yet, so there's nothing stopping the enemy team for uh, for turning on you. Now, his team is applying pressure, right, which is different, meaning his team is his team is up here brawling the opposing side, right? So his team is attacking the enemy team, making sure that uh, these guys need to fight back, meaning not everybody can just turn on Necros. But he still took a lot of damage on this solo engage because, again, there was no one else to spam on, and no one else to shoot at. And now he's chaining this onto somebody. One with low health, two with nobody to back him off, nobody to heal him, nobody to take away, uh, nobody to strike the opponent's inside. And that is not very advisable for most people, right? Like, the Doomfist is turning on him, his Ana is turning on him, right? And this is all that needed to be done was that nade. But, like, notice, again, how his speeds pace off. She can't hit him with the sleep. This sleep is so difficult for her to hit, Right? This is such a difficult sleep for her to her to hit. And he even dashes off the angle, not right at her. So it's even more like he... She can't just uh, shoot a, a sleep dot in a straight line. She needs to like shoot it off to the side and predict where he's going to dash. Which is really, really difficult to do. Right? So he didn't need to pop the deflect there. And Greta hold it for the blade itself. Now, he's going to get rest, which is nice. He's then going to go up here. He's going to get one kill. He's then gonna look for the send because he's all where the healing all came from. He's gonna dive in. This is also again one of those scenarios where you think that's very risky to do, but it's kind of the necros thing to do. He gets hooked here and he somehow survives. Somehow the hog does get the damage off and the hog gets deleted, which once again is pretty lucky. He's trying to survive Diana, doesn't manage to, and that's really, really rough. Um, dying there. And again, that's the kind of the risk versus reward that Necros does. He just burned his blade, he got rest, and he's 40% on his blade almost, right? So that's the kind of the risk and reward that you do by being this fast and being this aggressive. Is that you would push into scenarios, you can do huge plays, you can have so much impact, and uh, but there's a higher chance of you dying. Especially since he's not waiting for his team to engage, but it's the solo queue potential is so much higher, because you're constantly forcing plays. Doesn't really bother... Like, he's looking at his team, he's trying to value it, you know, using the resource that his team is going for him. But if he sees an opportunity, he will try to take it. So it's far more a focus on sabotaging the opposing side than strengthening his own side, or, or using his own side. Once again, because he's so mechanically gifted, that he can just do it. 
He can capitalize on some of those plays. And worst case scenario, he just builds a shit ton of Dragon Blade. And that is like the the even when Necros even when Necros loses, he wins, right? Like even when Necros uh, dies or or ends up making quote unquote a bad play, he still wins because he still gets so much Dragon Blade charge. Like look at this, he's 53 now. Right? Like he's building it so fast. Right? That's 60 that's 63. Right? He's just because of his aim and because of his mechanics and because of how, how how he's not scared of playing really, really close, he's just applying a lot of pressure, right? Here is forces the tracer to go out. Uh, that's the recall of the of the tracer. Now he doesn't have, actually have any healing. He's using wall climb to try to make sure the tracer doesn't the tracer doesn't chase him. Waiting for heals, because he's not that suicidal. Actually doesn't. He he's low health, he's waiting for his heals to go back, and he decides to clearly that this takes too long time and just turns around and wanna have, rather trade some will charge. That's actually, uh, yeah, sure. Again, constantly staying active. Looking for this tracer, constantly applying pressure to this tracer, which he has clearly decided is the, like, the biggest threat. He thought that the tracer were going to shoot earlier. He preemptively held the flag because he's low health. He's going to camp the tracer. That's the tracer. He's constantly applying pressure to this tracer. And again, notice that he's not chasing her. He's more just making sure that when she's playing around him and playing around this... Um, uh, when he when the tracer is kind of moving around this area, he's just applying pressure, but he doesn't chase her because he can't. So he's just applying pressure, trying to force out recoil, trying to make her less efficient, so he the tracer doesn't bully the back line because he has clearly seen that she is the better player on the team uh, of the enemy side, and that's like who he has decided to focus. That was more of a of a quote unquote stable Genji blade, right? That's not like uh, <laughs> trademark Necros uh, elite super speed, right? It's it's a dash in, getting some hits done. Uh, getting some more hits on by right? just two two plane swings and then straight onto a ball and then some right clicks right that's not what we call, normally call necro speed but it works that's more like what you would think is a very normal stable blade so what we can learn from necros again always insane place right very fast aggressive mechanics and, and all that kind of stuff and that's something that you just have to grind and work hard for and good luck on becoming as good as him that's very very difficult but again Constantly being aggressive, constantly pushing the advantage. And because of that, mixed with his mechanics, you see that he can build... Like Again, even when he loses, he wins. He gets all charge, he pulls out Blade, and then he wins off Dragon Blade. And that is kind of like a very, very common way of playing Genji, because Dragon Blade is so good, and because Genji's normal base kit is not very strong, but Necros is using that to his advantage. By building Dragon Blade at all times, so he always has a good win condition, and two... Genji's kit, like his main damage kit, and like where Genji's the most scary, is when he dashes close, when he gets all that good right-click damage up in their face. And Necros capitalizes and does that a lot, once again, because his mechanics are so stable. But for everybody watching this, I recommend maybe not doing solo dives like Necros does. Uh, let your team look for how much pressure your team has, and maybe look for them engaging, opposing side burning some abilities. Look for weakness like that. Trying to brute force a blade like that can be very, very uh, lucrative in some situations. But just remember that the mechanics needed is very high. Uh, there's a much higher chance of failure because the enemy team has so many plays they can make onto you and so many resources they can burn on stopping you. And Overwatch hasn't exactly been friendly to making uh, uh, targets that Genji is easy to kill, right? Moira, Brig, Baptiste, three supports that can shut down a blade or slow it down significantly. Um, so... Be a little bit aware of that, but if you think you have the mechanics, learn from him, be aggressive, constantly push, 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 look for opportunities, take them, constantly go in, and always remember, if you're losing, you're still winning if you're building a lot of fucking old charge. So, that's a breakdown of Necros. If you want to see more stuff like this, like, comment, subscribe, and tell me what you guys think about this. Who do you want to see in the future? Of course, my Twitter, my Twitch, and my Discord, link down in that description. If you want to improve, rank up, get better at the game, doesn't matter if you're bronze or top 500, doesn't matter what role you play, what hero you play, or what console or system you're on, hit me up on my Discord server, link down in the description. It's 50 euros for a two-hour session. I hope you guys have a lovely, lovely holidays. Uh, please do take care of yourself. Wash your hands, wear a mask. The vaccine is soon here, guys. So please make sure you take care of each other and, of course, also yourself. Tell somebody that you love them. My name has been Jonal, and you guys keep the enemy in your crosshair.